Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. If you are new here, I'd like to say welcome. And if you like what you see, I would love to invite you to subscribe. On my channel, you'll learn how to make beautiful budget-friendly DIYs for home decor, special occasions, gift giving, and holidays. Some of my DIYs have even been duplicated and sold. So if anything that I've mentioned sparks your interest, then please keep watching. We're going to start this DIY off with six of these box frames that I purchased from Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the plastic from these frames and then glue two of them together and then after that I'll glue the other two together. Once those two sets of frames are glued, we'll make a rectangular box by adding these frames on either end. As you can see I received a broken frame but I'm just going to glue it back together and set it aside and move on with the DIY. Starting out we're going to take these two frames and glue them together and I'm going to be using my Gorilla Clear Glue to bond these together and I'm also using these clips to hold the frames in place while the glue sets up. Spread some glue on one end of your frame. Make sure to get some along the edges and the corners as well. Press your frames together and make sure they're lined up evenly. And then once you've achieved that, go ahead and apply those clips and set them aside to dry. Now repeat those same steps on the next two set of frames. I removed the flower frame from the first set because the frame just didn't sit straight. So I'll be using that frame on the end to complete my box. Remove the clips from the frames and prepare to glue the ends on either end of the first set of frames. There are two ways that you can glue the frames to the end. Line the end frame evenly with the first two sets of frames or put it inside the frames for a larger box. I forgot to mention that you'll need some tape. So go ahead and apply your glue to one of your sets of frames. And then line your end frame up and tape them together. Repeat those steps until you have a rectangular shaped box. I stood my box up and added weight for a more secure bond. Remove the tape along with the glass inserts as well. This box is going to be my glam box so I want it to be a really brilliant silver. So I'm going to paint this frame white before I spray paint it silver. And I'll be using this Krylon spray paint. As you can see, the box is now white. So now I'll spray paint it with the silver spray paint. While this drying, I'll go ahead and get back to working on my other flower box that I built off camera. And this time I used eight frames instead of six because I wanted a larger box. I built this box the same exact way as I did the one on video. This is going to be our farmhouse box and I decided that I wanted to paint the base of the box gold and after it's dry I'm going to whitewash it with some white acrylic paint. Back to our first box. As you can see the spray paint is now dry. So what I'm going to do now is trace the box onto some foam board and then cut it out using an X-Acto knife. And this is going to act as the bottom of our box. This is a step that I should have done before I spray painted the box. So keep that in mind while creating your box. Clean up any frayed edges with some scissors and then glue your base onto your box. And remember to add some weight for a secure bond. Now back to the farmhouse box. 
As you can see, the gold spray paint is dry and I've partially decorated the box to save time. So what I want to do now is go ahead and take this matte acrylic paint and dry brush it onto the surface of the box and that'll give it a whitewash look. If you desire a more solid white look, then apply at least two coats to your box. After one coat of the dry brushing, your box should look like this. Now set it aside to dry. Now that my box is dry, I'm going to add some stencil art to the outside of my box. So I found this pack of stencils at Dollar Tree. And here I'm just showing you the SKU, but it'll be listed in the description box below. And this is the first stencil that I'm using. And this is the second stencil that I'll be using. Along with this gold metallic pen that came in a set with the silver metallic pen that I also picked up from Dollar Tree. The stencils come with a sticky backing. So just line the stencil up and press it against the box and it'll stay in place. Now shake your pen up and fill in your open design. You don't have to use a lot of pressure. I would advise you to use really light pressure when coloring a stencil. So once you color your stencil in, you should have something that looks like this. Remove your stencil and there's your design. So the next thing to do is to line the stencil up below and repeat the steps. Here's our completed stencil from top to bottom. I'll be repeating this design on the other end of the box as well. Take your second stencil design and line it up where the frames meet. Press it down. Fill in the open spaces with the metallic pen and just repeat those steps until you're done decorating your box. Once you're done, you should have something that looks like this. Now go ahead and decorate each end of your box. Once you've completed decorating your box, it's time to seal it with some Mod Podge. Because I want my box to have a more weathered, rustic farmhouse look, I'm going to use the matte finish Mod Podge. I wasn't sure if the metallic paint would smear, so I just blotted the Mod Podge on. And as you can see, it didn't smear, so I was good to go. Continue to brush the Mod Podge on until the box is completely covered. Once it dries, go ahead and apply a second layer and then set it aside to dry. Once the Mod Podge is dry, you should have something that looks like this. I decided to make the box more decorative, so I added some of these gold rhinestones. They're the gold tone solid ones, so they look more like nail heads and I thought that would be perfect for this box. I'm going to add one rhinestone at each corner of all the windows. Once you're done adding the rhinestones, you should have something that looks like this. Here's what the ends look like with the rhinestones in place. Now it's time to insert our images inside the windows. I was looking for some flowers, but I came across these beautiful wall decals at the Dollar Tree. And there's six different designs. So since this box has eight windows, I'm going to use the horses on each end and the center windows as well. I use one entire package of the stickers and two stickers from a second pack. So take the glass and line it up with your image and then cut it out. I didn't remove the backing from the sticker because I didn't want to glue it permanently. That way I'll always have the option to change the images out. And that'll work perfectly with the upcoming holidays. 
Just imagine how beautiful this box will look with Halloween decorations, Thanksgiving, and of course Christmas decorations. So just continue to cut your images and put them in place. After inserting all the images, you should have something that looks like this. The images are absolutely beautiful. I love the coloring. The color is rich, warm, earthy, definitely farmhouse. And as you can see, I added some of the solid gold rhinestones on top because I felt like it just needed something. To finish off the box, I'll cover the foam board using some rope that I purchased from Dollar Tree. I'm going to add small sections of my rope using my hot glue gun. That's it guys and we're done. Here's our completed farmhouse flower box. I think it turned out really pretty and I cannot wait to decorate it with flowers. So let's get started. I'm going to start out with four of these foam blocks that I purchased from Dollar Tree. I'm also going to fill the bottom of the box with some of this junk mail. That way I won't have to use so many foam blocks. I left the plastic wrapping on the blocks and I also had to add an additional half block to fill in the last open space. Once all the blocks were in place, I then cut my flowers one by one and arranged them inside my flower box. Now, I'm not the best when it comes to arranging flowers. All that I can say is take your time and arrange each flower to your liking. I have the name of the flowers that I used along with the SKU numbers in the description box below. And here is our finished look. I think it's absolutely beautiful and I cannot wait to use this in the tablescape. I'm going to complete the second box and then I'll come back and let you see what they both look like on display. Now on with the glam box. I'm going to add more sparkle to the background by applying my Mod Podge and glitter mixture. I'm going to use the silver glitter from this package of glitter that I picked up from Dollar Tree along with this gloss finish Mod Podge that I also picked up from Dollar Tree. Mix the Mod Podge and glitter together and then brush it over the entire box. Once the box is completely covered, set it aside to dry. As you can see, my box is quite sparkly and that's because of the Mod Podge and glitter mixture. I'm going to use my Gorilla Glue along with some hot glue to apply my Dollar Tree bling wrap to my box. And these steps are really easy. All you do is measure and cut. I have the five row bling and I have the three row bling. So I'll be using both to cover my box. So the steps are measure, cut, and glue. And repeat those steps. If you're wondering why I put glitter in the background, the reason for that is because this is a mesh bling and you can actually see through it. So that kicks the bling up a notch and makes it even more beautiful. And for that same reason, I prefer to use clear glue as opposed to using hot glue over the entire surface. I use a real small amount of hot glue only to hold the bling in place while the other glue sets up. And as you can see, as I said before, I'm just repeating the steps, measure, cut, and glue. Now that the exterior of my box is completely covered in the Dollar Tree bling, I'm going to decorate my flower blocks 
with some of these mirrors that I had left over from a previous Dollar Tree DIY. I glued the smaller mirror in the middle of the windows and then used the larger mirror on the outside of the window. I added mirrors to both sides of the box and I'm going to add some rhinestones on the ends. And here you can see that I've already added some decorative paper. So you do the same thing as before. Clean the glass, insert your paper, and then insert all pieces back into the windows. And then you're done. Feel free to use any decorative paper or pictures that you like. I already had this paper, so I just used what I had. Here are my two completed flower boxes and as you can see I did add four square rhinestones on the end of my glamour box. And here's our farmhouse flower box and I think it turned out really beautiful. I look forward to decorating it with different images and flowers for the upcoming holidays, especially Christmas. Alright guys, this concludes my DIY and if you like it, please leave me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.